Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another gun store vlog. And this week we are going to talk about consigning versus selling your used gun inventory to a gun store. Which option works better for you? And we will get into that. Now this week I'm not doing any type of inventory stuff, but I did just open up a um, Instagram account, which you can follow at marksman underscore TV. And I'm going to be posting up a lot of the type of used stuff. We get in some, some pictures, some cool stuff if we're out shooting. So I am kind of new to Instagram. So if you guys could go follow me, I would really appreciate it. And I'll kind of delve into that and see, you know, what I can do with it. It is sort of a new platform of getting content to you guys. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, so getting into the question of the week, should you consign or should you sell your used firearm inventory when you're ready to sell it? Okay, uh, there's going to be pros and cons to both avenues from both the perspective of the gun store and from the seller. So let's start with consignment. From the perspective of the seller, or I mean from the gun store, that would be me, uh, there are some pros and cons. So the, the negatives, typically I will say, is that if somebody comes in with a firearm that they want to sell to the gun store or get rid of, in a consignment basis, typically the gun store is going to get less money out of it when it sells than they would have had they just bought it outright and then gone and resold it. So that's one. The other thing is the gun store does not have as much control over the inventory when they go to sell it. That means if they want to pri you know, put it at different price levels, lower the prices, put it at a nice competitive price to blow it out. If they want to, uh, to trade it on something, uh, that's something else, is how do you work it out when you have somebody else's firearm and you want to trade it on something else, I guess the gun store could then pay the, uh, the owner of the firearm cash. Uh, if the gun store wants to put it on gun broker or send it off to an auction, they have to get the approval of the person who's consigning the firearm before they do that. So you just do not have as much control. The other thing is generally the paperwork that's required. So a lot of gun stores might do a over-the-counter handshake, especially with very good customers that they are familiar with who have, maybe they've consigned a lot of firearms for you, or they say, hey, our consignment fee is 15%. You are bringing in your firearm for consignment. When we sell it at the price that you agree on, you know we will get 15% of that. What happens if a month or two goes by and finally the thing sells, either party can be a little bit fuzzy on what the terms were if they weren't, weren't written down, and then there can be a disagreement over how much money is owed and kind of lead to a nasty situation. So because of that, it's always good to keep a consignment agreement, but with that consignment agreement comes time. So say somebody wants to come in and consign a collection of 10 Colt Pythons. You have to sit down, come out with, a, you know, hammer out a agreed upon value on each one, write everything in, write in the percentage that you agreed on, what if it sold at that price, what the percentage dollar amount would be, you know, how much time you agree that it'll stay there. It's so like the gun store will want to be guaranteed that it'll be there a certain amount of time for their work. You know, they don't want the uh, to go through all that paperwork, list something up for sale, and then the original owner to come in the next day and be like, yeah, I changed my mind. You know, because then, you know, the gun store isn't getting any type of compensation for all their work. Usually you say, okay, it's gotta be here a maximum of three months, or you know, also the gun store, if something just isn't going to sell, they don't want something sitting there for two years taking up their, their shop space. So usually you have a period of time agreement that both parties feel comfortable with where it has to stay there both parties agree on it. So again, that takes away a little bit of the control away from the gun store, you know, having to say, okay, this thing must stay here. I can't just put it up on gun broker and sell it if I'm at a loss if I want to, just, just to move it and get it out of here because I have other things coming in. Now, the advantages from the perspective of a gun store on consignment, the real big one is obvious. That is, say, let's go with those 10 Colt Pythons. Now, if those sell at, say, $2,000 a piece, stocking those or buying that collection from that person at a fair price, uh, that will be you know well up over $10,000 that that gun store would have to invest in that inventory. And a consignment agreement, it's nice because you can get in a really nice collection of Colt Pythons, which would bring in a lot of attention and a lot of people might be interested in that. Also gives the gun store an opportunity to make a consignment fee on those and the gun store does not have to front any capital. So that is the number one obvious advantage for the gun store. Now in our case here in our store, uh, we don't do anything with consignment. I prefer to just buy things outright. And unless I usually say if the sales price is going to exceed $10,000, I don't want to mess with consigning it. I would rather just buy it from you. 
Now we have a pretty small operation. You know, I again, like I've said on other vlogs, time is money. I have to put my time uh, where uh, you know around where I can, and it's difficult having to come up with consignment agreements. If somebody wants to come in and haggle on a firearm, I have to get you on the phone and ask, "Will you take this? Will you take that?" Um, so it's a lot of complication. I try to avoid and just say, "Hey, I will buy the firearm outright from you." you know, if, if I can, and then, you know, I'd rather just sell it on my own. I don't know if there's other gun store employees or gun store owners watching. What are your general sort of limitations on consignment? I would be very interested to know. So let's talk about consignment from the perspective of the seller. So the advantages of consigning are, you will usually get more money out of the firearm at, when you consign it versus when you sell it. Okay, obviously, since the gun store is not paying you or fronting you the money for that inventory, you can expect like, hey gun store, I'm putting a very rare, very nice firearm in your case for free. It's not costing you anything. But when it sells, you know, I want to get most of the money. Of course, you're going to get a commission for offering my firearm to your customers and for putting it in your shop, which you pay for, you know. But if you sold it outright, you know, instead of a, a 10 or 15%, uh, margin on that item which you could get for consignment you might expect 25 35 40 percent that the gun store is going to try and make on it if they buy it outright from you the excuse being hey I'm, I'm investing a lot of cash in this gun i don't know how long it's going to sit here therefore i need to get more out of it when it does sell the other advantage uh, advantage to consigning your used firearm to a gun store is you get an idea of the true value of the firearm so say you have that colt python that you inherited and you don't know what it's worth. And to you, it's, eh, it's a $500 revolver. Um, and you go into a gun store and the gun store says they offer you three and you think to yourself, eh, it's worth five, they're gonna give me three, okay, fine. And you just sold your $2,000 revolver for $300. Now, in the basis of consignment, that's really not going to happen to you unless the gun store, for whatever reason, because the gun store knows what that Colt Python's worth. Unless they wanna convince you to sell it for $500 when they could sell it for 2,000 and make 15% or 10% on that 2,000, which they're going to be incentivized to do. So their incentive will be to sell your gun for as much as they can. And with that low uh, consignment percentage rate, you're gonna get more out of it. So you have more transparency of the value of those firearms. So a big plus is if you inherit a bunch of guns, usually good to push for consignment because you know you're going to get a true market value less a consignment fee for those items. Same thing as if you put them up for auction, you know, with no reserve, you know that the thing is going to end somewhere around uh, where the market is willing to pay. It re reduces your risk for being screwed because you didn't know what you had. Now, some of the negatives for, for consignment from the customer standpoint is in a consignment agreement, the gun store is really just acting as an intermediary and they are connecting a buyer to your firearm, which you still own. Okay, so you do have to stay connected to that inventory as long as it sits in the gun store's shelf. And you know, in some per, uh, instances of consignment agreements, people could say, hey, I'm the gun store, I'm just finding you a buyer. I'm just putting this in my case, I'm handling your paperwork for you for a fee. But as far as the transaction's concerned, like if they take your used Python, take it home and blow it up and they come back to me, I'm gonna, going to send them to you because it's your gun. I just worked as an intermediary. I did not take responsibility for it. You know, and, and a lot of places who do consignment, they will say, okay, I'm going to back the sale no matter what happens. You know, once they've paid me and I've given you your consignment money, you're done. Uh, some gun stores are, are different, maybe pawn shops work that way, but I do know that some will say, hey, again, in the contract, I'm an intermediary. Any terms of the sale are between you two, and I'm just taking my cut. So make sure if you have a consignment agreement, you understand the position that the gun store is taking. So with that being said, it could be a negative that you stay connected. You have to receive phone calls from the gun store saying, hey, so-and-so is looking at your firearm. Will you take this for it? They're trying to haggle it down. You know, so you do get that constant life interruption of, of waiting for that gun to sell, uh, which you could avoid by just selling it outright. If you sell it outright, they've paid you the cash, you've signed a receipt, the gun store's bought it, you're done with it. That's it, it's gone. The gun store will sell it. If the gun store sells that gun and there's an issue, the gun store totally has to back the item because they sold it as the seller of that inventory. Now, another negative you have to consider is you are not going to get the money for your consigned item until after the firearm sells. So in a lot of cases, when people wanna sell their firearms, it's usually to get that money out of it, to put it into something else. Say some new hot 
Sager or something just came out and hit the market, you really like, let's say a SIG 365, you really like it, you really wanna grab one, gun store down the road, just got one in, and you know it's gonna sell quickly, you need to quickly dump a couple of your old firearms you don't use to get the cash in hand to go buy it. With a consignment agreement, that's pretty much impossible because even if it takes two or three or four days, you are not going to get that money until after your, your item sells and uh, you know, and then you can come in and the gun store can you know, then pay you out on it. So then the question comes into is, when is it a good idea to, to sell the firearm outright to a gun store versus consign? And usually I say that that's kind of, uh, you know, that would go case by case. So if you are in a position where you do want the money quickly and you just want to get rid of them, you want it to be done, a done deal, you don't want to have to deal with it, then I consider just selling the firearm outright. Now keep in mind, like we said, time is money. When you are doing, when you are selling the firearm, I, the way I look at it in any type of transaction is you are not foregoing additional money that you, you know, would otherwise have received just plain and simple, point blank, you're, you're not just foregoing that money. When you're talking about the difference between different transactions, you are talking about putting time versus money. So for example, if you sell it outright, you will get less because you get the benefit of not having to put in the time and effort of waiting for it to sell. So even though you get, say, okay, let's back up and say you're selling a Glock 19, I'm just gonna use some round numbers. If you sold the gun outright, you get $350, whereas if you can sign it, you get $50. Where's the benefit of that $50? You are not losing $50. You are paying the $50 for the benefit of getting your money today. You don't have to answer questions or phone calls if somebody's trying to haggle or ask a question about the firearm. You don't have to worry about, you know, is the, you know, depending on the agreement with your gun store, uh, are they, if my Glock 19 has issues, am I gonna hear about this thing again in two weeks? And you know, have to, you know, deal with it even further. So for that $50, you are getting the convenience of getting your money today and the sale is done. If that extra $50 is meaningful to you and you are willing to wait two weeks to get paid on that item and have to answer phone calls, maybe deal with haggling or anything like that, then that is what you are, that's what you are gaining for that extra time you are willing to put in, you are gaining $50. I put it this way too, we're selling a firearm to a gun store versus selling a firearm to a private party. Every single time in the instance of selling the firearm to the, to the end buyer, you are going to get more money. That goes without saying. If you sell it to the gun store, you are going to get less money. Are you foregoing that extra money just for the simple purpose of who you're choosing to sell it to? No. When you are selling to a gun store, you are getting, you are buying the benefit of going to a gun store that day getting the cash in hand that day, and then having the gun store go and find the buyer that's going to buy it. You can go find the buyer who's going to buy it and get that extra money, or you can let the gun store do it. But that's where that extra money's going to, whether it's going to the gun store or going to you. So that's kind of the way you have to figure out these transactions, is is that extra money worth the extra time? If not, sell it, be done with it, take what you got for it, and move on away from it down the road. Now in instances where consignment does come out to be very beneficial, is like I said, if you get a nice big collection, you are not a gun person and you don't know what the stuff is worth, you don't want to take the time to research every single minute detail of every, so you got a collection of 15 old World War II guns. It's going to take a lot of time for you to become a knowledgeable seller of those 15 items. If you just put them up for consignment, you can, exchange that work from having to research the items to just waiting for them to sell within your gun store. Same thing within an auction scenario. If you send them off to an auction, you know they're going to sell at about the market value. That's the one good thing about auctions is, is most of these sales of items do tend to fall around a market average where you're not gonna get screwed in very limited circumstances at an auction setting. Is your item gonna go drastically below what it was, you know, it's market value. And in many cases it goes drastically higher. So that's another thing. Auctions can be a topic for another week though. Now in the instance of selling, if, if you say you inherited a firearm, you don't really know what it's worth. You don't want to get screwed on it, but you really want that money today. You just cleared out an estate. You have a few siblings. You just want to get the cash and you don't want to wait three months. You want to settle the estate and move on from it. 
The best thing to do if you're going to sell to get that cash quickly is just take one afternoon and visit three or four different places. Okay, you could get that one store that's gonna offer you $300 for your $2,000 gun. The quickest way to kind of put that little safety net under you is to go to three or four different ones because even if there's one gun store that might try and screw you, chances are not all four or three are going to. So if you get a $300 offer, then an $800 offer, then like a $14 and then a $1,500 offer, you know that your gun is probably worth slightly above the $14 or $15, and those gun stores are happy to pay you more of what it's worth and willing to take, you know, three, four, five hundred dollar profit when they move it. And keep in mind too, higher end expensive stuff, the more valuable the item, the less amount of buyers there are. So it is easier to sell a $300 Bursa than it is to sell a Glock. It is easier to sell a Glock than it is to sell a Colt Python. It is easier to sell a Colt Python than it is a transferable machine gun. Because the more money you're talking about putting into that uh, sale, the fewer amount of people that exist that have that amount of income that they're willing to, to spend on a firearm. So keep that in mind too. That usually comes into play with you're talking about how much the gun store is looking to get back because if they have to invest $1,500, $1,600 in a Python, they might be waiting a while before that buyer comes along who's looking to drop $2,000 into it. So keep in mind too, if you have higher end items that you're looking to consign, you may be sitting on them, or the gun store may be sitting on them a little bit longer, which means you're going to have to consider that amount of time into how much time you will have to wait to get your money out of it, which is something else you might want to consider whether you are going to sell or consign the item. Anyway, guys, I will leave you with that. If you have any questions about that, please let me know now down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you wanna see more of our gun store vlogs, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification button. And please don't forget to go to my Instagram page, marksman underscore TV, and follow me there. And that, that, you know, again, I'm trying to grow that and see where we can go with Instagram as well. I will leave you with that. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.